Skinamarink is a high contender for one of the scariest movies I have ever seen in my entire life. I know what you're thinking. This guy is crazy. You're crazy. There is no way that this movie could possibly be that scary. Get help. Well, that may be true to you. I feel like if an indie horror movie with a budget of only 15,000 could invoke the feelings that I had to feel, then I have an obligation to at least spread my word about it, however few that may be. And I'm sure many of you have definitely already heard of the existence of said movie, as I'm actually very late to talking about it. However, I feel glad that I waited, because I feel like my feelings on the movie had to take time for me to really understand my thoughts. And when I tell you that it wasn't even up to me whether or not to put this movie as one of the scariest films I had ever seen. I wasn't happy, when before bed all I could think about was those voices coming out of the dark where nothing is visible. And this was a week after I had watched it. I am still at a loss for words as to how and why I had this type of reaction to this movie. There was a night where that fear was gone, and I had a sigh of relief because even though I was thinking about the movie, it wasn't hindering my ability to wander the darkness without a care in the world. Until I saw TikTok and heard that dreadful voice that repeats in the trailer. In this house. And all the fears came right back. And I had watched the TikTok in the afternoon, the night after I believed I was over the movie. I will get into the actual nitty gritty parts of the movie, but I really cannot stress it enough that this movie is not really a movie and is more of an experience. An experience that requires you to fall into a very niche category of people, I believe. You need to have a specific subconscious fear to be able to enjoy the experience for what it's worth. The crazy part is, this movie has the ability to unlock that fear within people who didn't even know that they had it, and I fell slightly into that category. I had already known beforehand that this type of analog YouTube horror really gets under my skin pretty badly, so a full movie had the potential to be hell. I just couldn't even conceive the idea that a horror movie would scare me as bad as this one did. Not even in the moment either. I was very uncomfortable throughout the movie and there were points where I was genuinely afraid of the movie. However, after reading up on it more and diving into the actual story, I was getting more and more freaked out. I don't know why I felt as if it were real. Anyways, you need to watch this movie, and I recommend seeing the movie before continuing onwards. Like I said prior, this isn't really a movie, and the story can be a little hard to follow. I didn't watch it with subtitles the first time, and I honestly wish that I did, because there's a part in the movie where there's just this loud rumbling noise, and I didn't know what it was until I watched it the second time with subtitles on. Our story takes place in 1995 and follows two young kids, Kaylee and Kevin, 9 and 4 I believe. I am too scared to look up the movie to confirm the ages. But early on, you can immediately tell this movie is going to be a little different. And by a little different, I mean very different. Various shots of ceilings and walls, and the grain is turned all the way up. It was made to look as if it was filmed on VHS, and boy did they really nail it. As we go along, I was already unnerved just by the way everything looked, however everything that is happening story-wise is otherwise normal-ish. Until Kevin appears to be talking to someone or something that cannot be seen, asking if they are playing hide and seek. Kevin closes his eyes and starts to count, until he falls down the stairs in an accident he would come out with just a bit of head trauma. The key thought here is if his fall down the stairs was actually an accident or not as later on we find that the entity in the house has no remorse for hurting children, so the act of pushing little four-year-old Kevin down a flight of stairs isn't exactly hard to believe. Kevin is taken to what we assume to be the hospital, and that loud rumbling noise that I had no idea what I was listening to was actually the car pulling out of the driveway and driving off. Kevin is returned home after a while, and we hear the dad on the phone talking to who I assume to be the mom as he is explaining the accident, telling us that Kevin had fallen down the stairs, but luckily no stitches were required, and that Kaylee reports that she believes Kevin is sleepwalking. Later on, Kaylee and Kevin start to look around for their dad, except he is nowhere to be found. As they traverse the house further, we see that all the windows and exit doors had suddenly vanished out of nowhere. They do this very simple visual trick where the door pops in and then pops out. I'm not exactly sure if this is just an artistic decision to show us that the doors and windows have already vanished, and it's just showing us that there did in fact used to be a door there. 
or if it's actually what the kids are seeing. This front door comes into sight only for it to disappear once more. Well, it's a very easy quick cut transition, the ominous tone that sounds almost cartoonish in a way adds an extra level of uneasiness. The next 20 to 30 minutes of the movie is Kaylee and Kevin just trying to keep themselves calm throughout everything happening. However, keeping calm becomes hard when you begin to lose your sense of time. There's a scene where I believe Kaylee says that she believes that it is time to get up. But how would you know? Mid-conversation between Kaylee and Kevin, we hear a thud. It's revealed to be a chair that has made its way up under the ceiling. A doll up in the bedroom levitates in the same way. Even the toilet is gone. I guess the demon didn't want the kids crawling out through the pipes. This was around the time when I was getting disinterested a little bit. I started checking my phone, and the movie overall was moving at a very slow pace. However, I looked up at just the right time to be immersed right back into the next important scene. Kaylee and Kevin are asleep in the living room after Kaylee is woken up and hears a voice in the darkness telling Kaylee to come upstairs. I fucking despise the voices in the dark, as it is one of the major aspects in the movie to genuinely unsettle me and keep me unsettled for the following week every night before I went to bed. Kaylee does as she was told and heads upstairs, and this is when I realized the scope of how experimental we were going to get with the camera. In the beginning, I was getting confused as to whether or not it was supposed to be found footage, as we heard the start of a tape playing at the beginning of the movie. I figure now that tape is the cartoons they put on the TV. Then with all the upward angles, it looked as if it was supposed to be from the child's perspective, yet this next scene is entirely Kaylee's point of view, as we are in her eyes throughout the next terrifying scene. Kaylee enters the master bedroom and sees her father sitting at the edge of the bed, facing away. Kaylee is instructed to look under the bed by her father, and what you think is going to be a jump scare results in nothing there. She tries to say that nothing is under the bed, but is met with no response. We don't even see the dad's face. She peeks under the bed again, and when she looks up, mom is on the other side of the bed facing away, and dad is gone. Kaylee. The mom tells Kaylee that she and her father both love her and Kevin very much. She asks Kaylee to close her eyes, and against our will, we are forced to see nothing. When she opens them back up, the mom is gone and has seemingly gone into the closet. She tells Kaylee to go back downstairs before the sounds of bones cracking and deep moaning can be heard coming from the dark. And before you know it, a hand grabs the doorframe and we cut to downstairs. I have no joke, I don't know how I'm gonna like edit this video with these movie scenes because just talking about it and thinking about it right now is just like any creak in the corner while doing this audio is just like, fuck, <laughs> what's going on back there? Kaylee returns downstairs, obviously petrified, and Kevin tries to cheer her up with a juice box. That would honestly work on me too. She asks for help to move the couch and pushes the thing in front of the stairs, hoping that would work. They return to sleep until that damn voice comes back and summons Kaylee back awake. Kevin is next to wake up and is instructed to go down into the basement. While he is down there, he hears Kaylee yelling out to him that she feels funny. It's hard to make out the words, it's as if she was trying to talk with her mouth closed. The light shines on Kaylee sitting on the floor aimed at her cross legs before flashing to her face which shows that her eyes and mouth have been removed from existence. It is at this point I have been squirming and wanting to check out every second the movie continues. I was back and forth turning up and down the volume and moving one earpiece off and putting it back on. I was looking away numerous times as it felt like I shouldn't have seen what I had. It felt cursed. Nothing, however, was able to prepare me for the closing act of this film. Kevin is back upstairs playing with his toys until the entity wants to play with him as well. After getting ignored, the demon says in an even more demanding tone that he wants to play. <laughs> he 
Kevin is not budging, however, because he refuses to let this creepy thing play with him, as I would not either. The demon opens a cupboard from the kitchen and instructs Kevin to go to it. As if he has him under a spell, he follows. He tells Kevin to put the knife in his eye and does as he is told. The imagery is graphic, but not too graphic. It's more fitting in the style the movie has been following, but for some people, I can imagine it still being upsetting. Kevin calls the police and actually gets through, which at first I thought was a trick, but as the call went on, I started to be convinced that it actually wasn't. The whole time this officer sounds genuine, and it makes the demon seem even more evil than it already is by allowing Kevin to talk to an officer only to immediately take the phone away and turn it into the toy phone that made me think of that bastard from Toy Story 3. Kevin and the demon have a frightening conversation where Kevin asks how the demon was able to turn the phone into the toy one. The demon answers, saying it can do anything, and it took Kaylee's eyes and mouth away because she said she wanted her real parents back. Alright, so this is me the day after doing the audio real quick, because I know I forgot to mention this one scene in the movie, and it is the one that probably scared me the worst. And it involves this damn phone, the little Fisher-Price phone. I don't remember where it is exactly in the movie, but there's a part where it just, it just cuts to these eyes that you can see from the dark, and they're <laughs> scary as fuck. But the lights turn on, and it turns out it's just the Fisher-Price phone sitting there, Looking all weird, looking up in the eye, looking up in the sky, or looking at the ground. But then the screen flashes, and he's looking right at you, and he's got this evil smile, and it's a horrible ringing sound that you have to hear during it. And then the light turns off again, and those eyes are still just glowing, and I fucking hated it. And I can't believe I forgot to say that. So here's that. Here's that little snippet of me talking about how fucking freaked out I was during that part. The movie progresses with Kevin making his way upstairs where the room is upside down and he's instructed to continue coming closer. There's a moment where it looks like all of their toys have been moved to the ceiling as the camera transitions backwards into what appears to be an infinite room going on forever and ever. It's up to interpretation, but I believe it's made clear that the demon then continues to murder Kevin very violently while it laughs and resets the event making Kevin relive the moment over and over and over. We see either the house or the dollhouse in an empty void, possibly giving us a bit more visualization as to where the kids are, another shot of a long door in the middle of nowhere, and finally, the shot that I had to look away from. The camera moves slowly into the darkness. And from that darkness, a face slowly starts to appear from within. No eyes and no mouth. In all honesty, no recognizable features of this face. But the face just stares at you and asks you for your name before coming to a close. Literally took me about a week to recover after seeing this movie. For me, I am able to look back on a movie after learning more about the, like, the symbolism and the hidden plot and become more afraid of it. So after reading up on all these theories and most of them being really plausible, I just kept going deeper and deeper into this skinnamarink rabbit hole of terror. I have my two theories. One is a bit more peaceful and one is a bit more horrific. One is that Kevin is just in a coma after facing serious head trauma due to his fall down the stairs and the whole movie is him perceiving slash reliving his life in this comatose state where his mom and dad were very troubled. The other theory is that this all-powerful demon with the capability to do anything it wants took hold of this house and over time took over more and more, making more things disappear and making things move around. As time went on, the demon eventually swallowed the house whole. Back in the day, I used to have these nightmares. Nightmares that weren't necessarily sleep paralysis because I wasn't waking up in the middle of REM sleep or whatever happens when you get that kind of bullshit. 
but it would be these weird limbo state-like dreams where I would just be walking around my house, but my movement was slow and everything took a lot of effort. They continue to be the scariest dreams I have to this day solely on the fact that it truly feels like I am awake and walking in another plane of existence with something else there and I'm not supposed to be where I am. And it, it is just, it is so scary. This movie visualized that nightmare and brought it to life. Now before I close off this video here, I want to mention that you might find a little comment down below saying that this is one of the worst movies that they have ever laid eyes on. And it would be from my dad. Yep, I showed him this movie after, not against his will, I even tried to warn him that I can guarantee he was not going to like this movie. Yet, yeah, this just goes to show that this fear doesn't exist in all of us, and so some people physically can't comprehend why the dark angles of just ceilings and walls are so uneasy, and why the way everything was structured generates such a feeling of fear. And it is that fear of waking up in the middle of the night when you were like five years old, and everything looks like shadowy figures, and it's haunting. I really enjoyed this movie, but it is not a movie I think I will enjoy watching again, as it just puts me right back into that state of fear that I get to live with for the next week.